Peace and Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism. Good Garvey Day to my continental Africans. Good Garvey Day to my Africans in Asia. Good Garvey Day to my Africans in South America. Good Garvey Day to my Central American Africans. Good Garvey Day to my Caribbean Africans. Good Garvey Day to my Canadian Africans, my South Pacific Africans. Good Garvey Day to my American Africans, my Texas Africans, my North Carolina Africans, my South Carolina Africans, my Michigan Africans, my Illinois, California, Arkansas, Arizona Africans, my Massachusetts and Connecticut, Vermont, New Hampshire, in Maine Africans, peace and pan-Africanism to my New York and my New Jersey Africans, my Alabama and my Georgia Africans, my Florida Africans, peace and pan-Africanism. But today I want to focus on my European Africans. Today I want to focus on my European Africans. Last week, there was a Platinum Jubilee celebration for the Queen of England. I want my British Africans, I want my European Africans, I want all my British Empire sympathizing Negro Africans to listen up. Last week, there was a Platinum Jubilee celebration to mark the 70 years that Queen Elizabeth II has been on the throne of the British Empire. Platinum Jubilee celebration marking 70 years that Queen Elizabeth II has been on the throne in the United Kingdom. I saw Negroes all across England. I saw Negroes all across the United Kingdom. I saw Africans all across Europe celebrating and honoring Queen Elizabeth II of the British Empire. Queen Elizabeth II of the British Empire assumed the throne, the monarchy of England on June the 6th, 1952. She assumed the throne of England on June 6, 1952. I graduated high school June the 6th, 1992. So when I graduated high school on June the 6th, 1992, she had already been on the throne for 40 years. June 6, 1952, she gets the throne. June 6, 1992, King Kong Consciousness graduates high school. She has been on the throne for 70 years. She was 26 on June 6, 1952. She was 26 on June 6, 1952. I am at a loss to understand why Africans in the UK, I'm at a loss to understand why Africans in the Caribbean islands, I'm at a loss to understand why Africans in America and around the world around the world are celebrating 70 years of British white supremacy, imperialism, and African domination symbolized by Queen Elizabeth II. I'm trying to understand why any African on the planet Earth would be celebrating the British monarchy the British monarchy more than any other European family, the British monarchy more than any other enslaver of African people is responsible for the greatest number of enslaved Africans. They are responsible for the greatest burden that slavery put on the backs of African people. Why in the hell are we celebrating the face of white supremacy. For those of you who do not know, 
when the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, the greatest Pan-Africanist of all time and the greatest human organizer in world history, when the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, the greatest Pan-Africanist of all time and the greatest organizer in human history, when the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, the greatest Pan-African Pan-Africanist of all time and the greatest human organizer in history. When he brought forth the largest black organization in modern history, the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League in 1914. At the time Garvey founded the UNIAACL, the British Empire controlled 25% of the world's population. I wanna say this again. I need you to understand, overstand, and understand me. I want you to understand, overstand, and understand me. When Garvey created the UNIA ACL, the British Empire control, 25% of the entire population of the planet Earth. When the most honorable Marcus Garvey held his first international convention of the African peoples of the world at Madison Square Garden in August of 1920. During the first great Garvey convention in New York City during Leo season of 1920, the British Empire controlled 25% of all the land and the resources on the planet Earth. I need us to understand this. The greatest enslaver of African people was the British Empire. The greatest dominator of African people was the British Empire. The greatest thief and exploiter and monopolizer and controller of African resources was the British Empire. So can somebody help me understand? Why any African on the face of the earth would be celebrating the monarchy of a woman who during her reign as the queen of England and the monarch of the British Empire since the age of 26, June 6, 1952, Queen Elizabeth II was on the throne when Deedon Kamathi of the Kenyan Land and Freedom Army was assassinated. Let me say this again, because y'all don't understand, overstand, and understand the Prince of Pan-Africanism right now. When Deedon Kamathi was executed in 1957, when Deedon Kamathi was fighting the British for control of the land of Kenya, Queen Elizabeth II was on the throne. Deedon Kamathi was executed upon the permission and authority of Queen Elizabeth II. Kwame Nkrumah was overthrown under the authority of Queen Elizabeth II. Chris Ani of South Africa was likely executed under the authority of Queen Elizabeth II. Steve Biko's murder. Robert Sabukwe's incarceration and untimely death, all under the authority of the Queen of England. But we are celebrating. But Nigeria oil, gas, gold, resource rape under the authority of the Queen of England. I'm trying to understand. Jamaica under the Queen of England. I'm trying to understand. All the islands of the Caribbean controlled by the British, all the countries in Africa controlled by the British and we are celebrating. We are celebrating 
the 70 year rulership of a woman who has caused more harm to African people globally. We are celebrating the rulership of a woman who has caused more harm to African people globally than almost any single person you can name. What she did to African people since 1952 is worse than what any other leader has ever done to a people in history aside from enslavement itself. And if you want to say she's only the face, she don't make the decisions. Well, she damn sure didn't stop it either. She didn't stop the assassination of Deedon Kamafi. She didn't stop the torture of the Kenyan Land and Freedom Army. She didn't stop the overthrow of Osajafo, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. She didn't stop the murders of Steve Biko, the incarceration of Robert Sabukwe. So many African leaders around the world lost their lives as a result of Queen Elizabeth II. And we got the authority. And I see Negroes in the chat defending the queen. I see Negroes in the chat defending the queen this is how you know we as african people are at an all-time low this is how you know that we as african people are at an all-time low i don't care if british imperialism did not start with her british imperialism in my life was ran by her i've never seen a jew defend the nazi regime I've never seen a European Jew defend the Nazi regime, but here go Negropeans. Negropeans on here defending the Queen of England against crimes against African people and humanity. We are in trouble. And to my African leaders, to my African leaders, to my African leaders, you should be embarrassed. To the former and current British colonies in the Caribbean islands, you should be embarrassed. To my African leaders in Africa of the former British colonies, you should be embarrassed. To be celebrating the Queen's Jubilee when that woman oversaw the execution, the torture, the massacre, the lynchings the castrations, the incarcerations of black people for the last 70 years. Ghana doesn't get her independence until 57. Ghana doesn't get her independence until 57. The queen was already on the throne when Ghana got her independence. This woman is the face of neocolonialism. Even if you want to scapegoat, even if you want to scapegoat her predecessors, even if you want to scapegoat her predecessors, you can scapegoat the fact that she is the face and the mother of the neo-colonization of the African continent and the British islands. If you want to scapegoat somebody else for colonization and slavery, if you want to scapegoat somebody else for colonization and slavery, you cannot scapegoat the fact that she was on the throne in post-colonial Africa, which makes her the face and the force and the power behind the neo-colonization of Africa. How much money are Anglophone African countries paying the queen right now? How much of the annual income, the annual revenue of former Anglophone British colonies in Africa, how much money is Nigeria paying the queen every year? How much money is Ghana paying the queen every year? How much money is Kenya 
paying the queen every year? How much money is Malawi paying the queen every year? How in the hell can African countries celebrate a woman? How can African countries celebrate a woman who is robbing you blind by making you pay a debt that she actually owes to you? African countries are paying debts to European countries that they should be paying to Africa and you got the audacity to celebrate. You got the audacity to celebrate. We are disrespected as a race because we take no honor in standing up against our oppressors. We are disrespected as a race because we take no honor in speaking truth to power. We are disrespected as a race because we take no honor in clarifying the historical record. Brothers and sisters, I suggest you get a book on African colonization and you study African colonization from 1952 to 2022. I want you to get a good book on the history of neocolonialism. Read Osagifo's Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's Neocolonial. Read it. Why are we celebrating a woman who's responsible for the rape and oppression of millions? Af Africa is in the condition she's in right now because of the Queen of England. Africa is in the condition right now because of the Queen of England. Y'all want to know why Africa is so backwards? Shout out to my Africans. Let me defend my continental African brothers and sisters right now. Let me defend my continental African brothers and sisters right now. Let me defend my continental African brothers and sisters right now. The reason Africa is still in the condition she is in. 70 years later. 70 years later. It'll be 70 years since Ghana's independence in 2027. 65 years later, Africa's still in the condition she's in because the Queen of England are making the former British colonies pay reparations to Britain. How in the hell can an African country be forced to pay reparations to the country that enslaved her people, dehumanized her people, destroyed her culture, raped her resources, dominated her land? And the former British colonies of Africa are paying reparations to the British crown. How in the hell is that even possible? How in the hell is that even possible? And we want to turn around and honor the woman who sits on the throne of global white supremacy. Honor the woman who is the face and the figure and the force behind global African oppression right now the british empire controlled 25 percent of the world's people in 1914 the british empire controlled 25 percent of the land and resources of the entire earth by 1920 and we got the audacity to act like this woman was some sort of blessing to African people. Let me say this. A historically ignorant people have no right to be free. A historically ignorant people have no right to be respected. A historically ignorant people have no right to independence. Are we going to laugh at our ancestors' pain like that? Are we going to turn a blind eye to the millions of black women who were raped by soldiers of the British Army? Are we going to act like we don't know?
that they castrated black men, forced them to be slaves on their own island, sent tens of millions of us into slavery, into foreign land. And we want to stand here and celebrate the platinum jubilee of a white woman who represents the face of of British imperialism and global white supremacy, brothers and sisters, come on. Brothers and sisters, come on. And let's not even talk about the oppression of our brothers and sisters in the United Kingdom. Let's not even talk about the unemployment in the United Kingdom for black people. Let's not talk about the hunger and the homelessness of black people in the United Kingdom. Let's not even talk about the disenfranchisement and the police brutality against African people in the United Kingdom. Let's not talk about the miseducation of African youth in the United Kingdom, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters. This is the equivalent of the American African celebrating the 4th of July. This is the equivalent of the American African celebrating the 4th of July. This is the equivalent of the American African celebrating the 4th of July. On July 4th, 1776, when Thomas Jefferson issued the Declaration of Independence, a man who owned hundreds of Africans, a man who owned hundreds of Africans when they read the Declaration of Independence on July 4th, 1776 from Independence Hall right here in Philadelphia, right here in Philadelphia. I was born less than 10 minutes away from Independence Hall. I was born less than 10 minutes away from Independence Hall but I was born on the anniversary of the Nat Turner War. I was born less than 10 minutes away from American white supremacy's birthplace, but I was born on the anniversary of Nat Turner's revolution. While they read the Declaration of Independence, while they read the Declaration of Independence right here in Philadelphia, millions of Africans were being enslaved. Millions of Africans were being dehumanized. Millions of Africans were being oppressed. But yet on July 4th, you can find Negroes in every city in America. You cannot go to a city in America on July 4th. You cannot go to a city in America on July the 4th and not find Negroes celebrating the independence of their slave master. You cannot go to a city in America on July 4th and not find some Negroes celebrating the independence of their slave master. And you wonder why we are in the condition we are in. A people without honor have no right to be treated as equals. A people without honor have no right to be treated as equals. A people who will not respect themselves, a people who will not respect their ancestors, a people who will not respect the struggle that they have had to endure to get where they are, have no right to be free. As far as Dell Curry, as far as Dell Curry goes, I was watching the game last night, and it appears that Dell Curry showed up with a snow bunny to his son's basketball game. Now, the Curry family personal business is none of my business. 
I simply hope because I don't want to rush the conclusions. I simply hope because I don't want to rush the conclusions. I respect Del Curry. He was a good father to his sons. I understand that there may have been a divorce or a separation between him and his wife. That's none of my business. But what is my business, Mr. Curry? What is my business, Mr. Curry? Is black men showing off white women in other black women's faces in public. What you do in your house is none of my business. What you do in your home is none of my business. But when I see a famous black man, Mr. Dale Curry, and I'm not disrespecting you, sir, but the cameras last night couldn't keep the camera off you and the snow bunny. They wanted Dr. Umar to see. Shout out to the NBA videographers. Because ever since I exposed the snow bunny crisis amongst black celebrities, the videographers have been helping me catch you runaway slaves. Ever since I exposed the snow bunny crisis, the NBA videographers have been helping me catch you runaway slaves with your snow bunnies in public. You left a beautiful black woman. It's not my place to even speculate on your divorce. It's none of my business. But how dare you, sir? How dare you? Come to your son's game at the NBA Finals with a snow bunny. You shouldn't have done that, Mr. Curry. I'm not condemning you. I'm not throwing you under the bus, sir. I'm simply saying it's a bad look for a man in your position to leave, to have ended a marriage. I'm not blaming you for the marriage. I don't know. That's none of my business. I'm simply saying that you were in a marriage with a black woman. And we now see you in public with a white woman. You were married to a black woman. I understand y'all may have had to sip separate for mutually agreed upon reasons. I am not getting in your marriage business. I'm simply saying that it is not a good look for you to be seen at your son's game hugging up on that snow bunny. Now, let me add a disclaimer. That could have been Dell Curry's co-worker. It could have been Dell Curry's neighbor. It could have been. Dale Curry's massage therapist. It could have been Dale Curry's accountant. It could have been his banker, his insurance agent. I want to add a disclaimer because I have no proof that that white woman was his snow bunny. But I did see you hug her a couple of times. It could have been an innocent platonic hug. I don't know. But by the looks of it, it appeared to be intimate. So for these last three games of the NBA Finals, Mr. Curry, for the sake of the self-esteem of all black girls and for the sake of the respect that we as black men owe the black woman, I'm going to ask you, sir, to not hug up on any white women while the television cameras are on you. But I digress. I digress. No disrespect to Mr. Curry at all. No disrespect to Mr. Curry. He made a bad decision. We all make bad decisions. And I'm just asking my good brother to not make that bad decision again to be caught in public hugging up on a gallon of ice cream. That's all I'm asking. Brothers and sisters, please support the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. Brothers and sisters, please support the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy. Please hit your cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Please hit your cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Please hit your cash app and help us finish the renovations on the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. For my international Africans, please hit your PayPal. For my international Africans, please hit your PayPal. PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. 
paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. Dr. Umar needs your help for the shockumentary. I need to raise some money for the shockumentary. We will be filming next month. Please become a donor. $100 sponsor for the shockumentary is basic level. $250 sponsor for the shockumentary is intermediate level. And $500 sponsorship for the shockumentary earns you the elite level sponsorship. Elite level sponsors will get their own private screening and Q&A. They will be the first to see the shockumentary when it is completed later this year. I repeat, $500 one-time sponsorship donation will get you a private dinner movie preview and a personal Q&A with Dr. Umar. Intermediate level, you will also get a private screening. And you will also get the Q&A with Dr. Umar. But the elite level sponsors will get a certificate that they can hang on their wall that shows they sponsored for $500 the most anticipated and important documentary on the school to prison pipeline of the 21st century. For those of you who can afford to be an elite level sponsor at $500 for the documentary of the millennium, if you can't afford to be an intermediate sponsor at $250 for the documentary of the millennium or $500 elite sponsor for the documentary of the millennium, you can be a $100 sponsor for the documentary of the millennium. In the $100 sponsors, you will also get a private screening, but you don't get the certificate. You don't get the autographed hoodie or the autographed DVD, but all of you, whether you are a basic documentary sponsor at $100 or an intermediate documentary sponsor at $250 or an elite level sponsor of the documentary at $500, your name will be on the credits. Your name will be on the credits for the most anticipated and the most powerful school to prison pipeline documentary ever made. Make your documentary sponsorship payment to Dr. Umar's cash app, dollar sign Dr. Umar Johnson. For my international Africans, you can make your shockumentary sponsorship one-time donation payment on my PayPal. My PayPal is paypal.me slash Umar the Psychologist. PayPal.me slash Umar the Psychologist. PayPal.me slash Umar the Psychologist. American Africans, you can use Zelle to make your one-time documentary sponsorship donation payment by using my cell number for Zelle, 215-989-9858. 215-989-9858 is my cell number. That is also the number you can use for your Zelle sponsorship documentary donation payment. Or you can use my cash app, dollar sign, D-R-U-M-A-R Johnson, or my PayPal. I'm hoping some of you will choose to be a basic level documentary sponsor at $100. I'm hoping some of you will agree to be a $250 documentary sponsor at the intermediate level. And I'm hoping some of you will agree to be a $500 elite level sponsor for the shockumentary. Brothers and sisters, do not celebrate July the 4th. My European Africans and my Caribbean Africans do not insult our ancestors. Do not insult the struggle of African people by celebrating the Queen Elizabeth's said 70th anniversary Platinum Jubilee. It is disrespectful to who we are. It is disrespectful to our revolutionary heritage and it is disrespectful to our ancestors. Charlotte, North Carolina, I will see you Saturday, June 18th at the House of Africa for the Juneteenth celebration. Charlotte, North Carolina, I will see you on Saturday, June 18th from 10 a.m. until 10 p.m. I speak at three o'clock at the House of Africa for Juneteenth next Saturday. 
South Carolina. I will see you next Sunday, June 19th, HBCU Benedict College Stadium. HBCU Benedict College Stadium, Columbia, South Carolina, Sunday, June the 19th, from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. I speak at 3 o'clock in Charlotte, North Carolina. I speak at 3 o'clock on in Columbia, South Carolina. I speak at 3 o'clock in Charlotte, North Carolina, Saturday for Juneteenth. And I speak at 3 o'clock in Columbia, South Carolina for Juneteenth. Duncanville, Texas, a suburb of Dallas. Duncanville, Texas, a suburb of Dallas. Duncanville, Texas, a suburb of Dallas. I speak in Duncanville at the Holistic Health Festival at three o'clock. I speak in Duncanville, June 26th, Sunday, June 26th, Duncanville, Texas, Holistic Health Festival, three o'clock. Get your tickets on Eventbrite. Waldorf, Maryland, Southern Maryland. I will see you September the 18th. I will see all of you at the FDMG Festival on Saturday, September the 10th. I will see my Chicago Africans at the International Festival of the Arts on Labor Day, September the 5th. I will see my Chicago Africans at the International Festival of the Arts on Monday, September the 5th. Toledo, Ohio. I am making my first ever visit to Toledo, Ohio this summer. Mobile, Alabama, we had to change the date. The mayor of Pritchard got a little nervous about allowing me to speak at your Juneteenth celebration. The mayor of Pritchard, Alabama got a little nervous about letting me speak at the Juneteenth celebration. So I'm gonna do a lecture in Mobile, Alabama. We're working on that right now. To my British Africans, my United Kingdom Africans, my Luton Africans, my Manchester Africans, my Wolverhampton Africans, my Bristol Africans. I will be coming to England in October. Don't forget Nat Turner land, August the 21st. Don't forget Nat Turner land, August the 21st. Donate to FDMG, donate to the Shockumentary, support black women, support black men, support the black family, and let's support African independence. This is your brother, King Kong Consciousness, signing out. Peace in Pan-Africanism. Peace in Pan-Africanism. Peace in Pan-Africanism. Pan-Africanism by any means necessary. Black power.